Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. On my channel, as well as on my Facebook community, I'm all about teaching and learning and sharing. Especially as the fluid art community is growing, there is a lot of misinformation, almost magical beliefs in recipes and mazes of uh, questions and answers. Uh, you can also already check my other videos on different background information topics because knowledge is power. I strongly believe you need to understand uh, what is happening when you do something that you'll be satisfied with it and you know that what is happening. So today I want to help you understand your paint basically. So we work with acrylic paint. Uh, it will help to make you understand of, yeah, if some things you read or hear make sense to you after you have that knowledge. The difference in quality is also based on all the ratios of these ingredients we're going to talk about. The four basic ingredients are uh, basically carriers, which is in acrylic paints, water, water-based, it's the biggest component. Then we have binders, which is for durability, uh, color retention and flexibility. And it also very, very important to understand specifically for acrylic pouring is that it holds our pigments together. Then we have the pigments. Uh, this gives the color and also how often you have to apply a color to make it opaque. And yeah, this is also a question of quality. Uh, then you have additives that enhances the paint wearability, like leveling and performance. So I'm gonna now show you basically how this it would have would be made. So I have a little cup, and these are pigments. They're kind of in a powdery form. They can be synthetic. They can be natural. All that. So let's just use a bit and understand what's going on. A little bit goes a long way because these are really, really good pigments. So there are the pigments. Now let's go for the binder. What is the binder? Of course, there's some chemical polymers and all that. But in acrylic pouring, we would say that the PVAC is the binder. I say specifically PVAC because that is even used specifically to make paint. And... Um, yeah, it's acid-free acid, acid and this is the difference to normal PVAC. So, ugh, if I could get this open. So, let's get a zip of binder in here. And I really only for demonstration purposes going to use a really tiny bit. So now we have pigments and binders. And now let me get a zip of water. So the most important thing, like I said, is that the binder holds the pigments. And that will only work uh, as far as you keep it in a good ratio. So adding water is Yes, to make the paint itself, like water-based paint, like I said, it's the carrier. But if you do it too much, you, this connection will not hold. So the pigments will not be strong enough, the pigment connection. That's already where I say, yes, it looks okay if you do acrylic pouring just with water, but it's not because you break the connection. Now we also add a lot of water so the existing pigment connection is not strong enough and that's why we add additional binder in the form of mostly glue. There's also things like pre-made acrylic binder which is the same thing, it also makes the connection. Now you might think, but I add Floatrol. Floatrol is not a binder. Floatrol is what I just called an additive, enhancing the workability. 
So it will not necessarily support your um, pigment connection, but it will yeah, do that, what we want. Make this creamy consistency uh, that gives a good flow, that doesn't leave a lot of bubbles and wobbles and all that. So that is why a lot of people lose uh, use a, a combination even. And yes, you can achieve all that with just Floatrol. And after contacting Overtrol, which is a manufacturer for the European uh, Floatrol, they say there is to some extent a binder in there. But if you ask uh, a painter, uh, then they would say, uh, 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 this thing, what we often do, like five parts, flow troll, one part faint, that's not how you should use it. You shouldn't go to that ratio. It doesn't help your pigments. Uh, it doesn't help your uh, binding uh, connections so, and, and all that. You need to see it in a ratio. Pigments, binders, and if you want additives like flow troll. The risk is uh, down the road that the paint will not look and perform well anymore. So that's basically um, the, the paint, the pigments, the binders and the additives. So you can make your own picture about now if it makes sense to you to use only Froll Troll, to use only glue or which glue how much water you can add or not. My personal advice is any kind of pouring medium you use, it's totally sufficient if you use 30% to paint. And I like the binder PVAC with a zip of Floatrol just to make it all creamy and nice and running. But as I said, mostly perhaps you could say our art is not necessarily for in 100 years in the museum. So do whatever you like. The main factor, your cells or painting uh, will not depend on the recipe, but only on your consistency. Have a look at other videos on that. And that's for now, it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and this information helped you. Have a look at the description to find the link to my Facebook, Instagram, or also the group on Facebook I have for sharing and learning. And I hope to see you back soon.